Welcome to another short Bible study, accurately predicting history, 2,500 years in advance. This impacts you and me that are living in the last days before the coming of our Lord and Savior. My name is Arnold Neoff, and I love speaking from the Word of God. The book of Daniel was written in the 6th century before Christ. Skeptics have tried to discredit this book by placing its date of writing at a later time, but archaeological evidence such as the Dead Sea Scrolls proves that Daniel was indeed written in the time the Bible claims. We open the second chapter of this apocalyptic book and we find ourselves in the palace of the great king of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar has invaded the land of Judah and taken Daniel and his friends in captivity with the intention to educate them in the Babylonian system. The chapter starts with the king waking up from a nightmare and he fails to recover the images of his dream. So he calls his wisest men in the kingdom to come and help reveal the dream and its interpretation. This Pagan men accurately declared that there is no man on earth that can reveal this information to the king except the gods. These men knew that only a divine power could actually reveal the unknown. In his fury, the king then announced that all the wise men of Babylon should be killed. I'm sure everyone declared themselves dumb at that point. The message soon came to Daniel and his friends. They were Hebrews who worshipped the God of the Bible. Rather than panic, Daniel calmly requested some time so that he could join his friends in prayer. Seeking an understanding of the king's vision from the God of the universe. His prayer is recorded in Daniel 2 verse 20 to verse 30. And we need to share this prayer. Blessed be the name of God forever and wisdom and might are His. He changes the time and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those that have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness. And the light dwells with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and have now made known unto what we asked of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's demand. So God has revealed the king's dream to Daniel. And Daniel is then quickly rushed into the king's presence. The king eagerly asks Daniel if he is able to reveal the dream to him. And Daniel responds with great wisdom. The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers say unto the king, but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and make known to the king. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. The secret of history up to the end in God's word. We will know what to expect by allowing God to reveal these secrets to us through his word. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So God's word illuminates the Christian's pathway. God has given prophecy to guide us in these last days. Notice what the Bible says in 2 Peter 1 verse 19. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. To which you do well to take heed as to a light that shines in a dark place, 
until the day dawns and the day star arises in your hearts. Prophecy is a light in a dark place. It helps illuminate our understanding. God uses his prophetic agents to communicate these secrets. Amos 3 verse 7 says, For the Lord Jehovah will do nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. God reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. There will be no surprises. Jesus himself encouraged us to do what we are doing right now with our open Bibles. He wants us to read our Bibles, to study our Bibles, to share the truths of our Bibles. Matthew 24 verse 15 says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, Spoken by the Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoever reads, let him understand. So Jesus says, it is important to read and to understand the book of Daniel. So why should this book interest us? The fact is, it did interest the heathen king of Babylon. More so, it should interest us. The creator God of this universe wants us to know the secrets of what is going to happen at the end. Daniel 2 verse 28 says, But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and makes known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed are these. Now, Daniel gives all the credit to God. I love the way he does it. You know, we don't give the credit that we need to, to God, our, our creator God. And so he shows the difference between the true God of the universe and the gods of false religions that claims to know the truth. Daniel now starts telling the king what he dreamt. Daniel we read verse 32 this is this image his head was of fine gold his breast and his arms were of silver his belly and his thighs were of bronze his legs were of iron his feet were part of iron and part of clay you watched until a stone was cut out without hands which struck the image upon the feet which were of iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. Verse 35 says, Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were broken to pieces together, and they became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, so that no place was found for them. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The king is now sitting on the edge of his throne. Yes, yes, that is what I saw in my dream. Wow! But what does it mean? And then Daniel starts interpreting the dream. We go to Daniel 2 verse 37. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And... Wherever the sons of men, the peace of the field and the birds of the heaven, heavens live, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. So hereby, clearly Daniel identifies King Nebuchadnezzar as representing the head of gold in this dream. Gold was a fitting symbol for Babylon as its wealth and greatness were unrivaled in the ancient world. Greek historian Herodotus noted that Babylon surpasses in splendor any city in the known world. He goes on to describe the outer walls of Babylon to be 320 feet high, 56 miles long, 80 feet thick, wide enough to race multiple chariots side by side on top of them. 
Babylon could also boast of the hanging gardens, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Much to the king's dismay, his kingdom would not last forever. Daniel 2 verse 39 says, And after you shall rise another kingdom, lower than you, and another third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. The history books are clear that sure enough, Babylon would be overtaken. The Medo-Persian Empire would become the next world power. Before Medo-Persia would come to power, the Bible identifies this kingdom by name. Daniel 8 verse 20 specifically states the kings of Media and Persia. So when we look at this chart, we see that Medo-Persia reigned from 539 to 331 before Christ. The Persian army led by Cyrus the Great conquered Babylon in 539. Well, this is what history says. Now, silver was a fitting metal for this kingdom as Medo-Persia was inferior to Babylon, you know, that was gold, and used silver as a primary mode of currency. Daniel continues to boldly reveal the dream's meaning by describing the third metal. Verse 39 says, Another third kingdom of bronze which shall rule over all the earth. Historians agree that this next kingdom led by Alexander the Great is none other than the kingdom of Greece. The Bible once again accurately predicted the kingdom by name centuries before it rose to power. This is what the Bible says, Daniel 8 verse 21, it is the king of Grecia. So this king would conquer Medo-Persia and then Daniel identified the next ruling kingdom. Verse 40 says, And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, since iron crushes and smashes all things, and as the iron that shatters all these, it will crush and shatter. A more fitting description could not be given for the next kingdom, the powerful empire of Rome. And uh, we see that they are uh, they are ruling from 168 before Christ to 476 after Christ, the powerful empire of Rome. Known for their dominant army and brutal power, Rome has been given the, the fitting nickname, the Iron Monarchy. This empire described in the New Testament of the Bible ruled during the time of Christ. Roman soldiers whipped Jesus with an iron cat of nine tails. They drove iron nails into his innocent hands and he, they pierced his side with an iron spear. So far, God has revealed the rise and the fall of four powerful world empires. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, pagan Rome. The history books confirm the accuracy of this amazing prophecy. But Daniel was not finished. He goes on to describe the feet of this great image and with incredible detail reveals the historical significance. We find this in Daniel 2 verse 41 to verse 43. History affirms the Bible's account that Rome was not overtaken by a single dominant empire, but was divided up into sections. And these sections are what we know today as modern Europe. The Bible mentioned that they would mingle themselves with the seed of men. This intermarriage of royalty was widespread but as the Bible predicted, these nations never formed a bond. Amazingly, Daniel reveals that these nations would not cleave one to another. 
That is, they would never unite into one dominant kingdom. Incredibly, history reveals that even this very detailed part of prophecy is accurate. 100% accurate. So since 476 after Christ, the mixed nations occupied this, this part of the world. Charlemagne tried to unite Europe and he failed. Napoleon tried to unite Europe. He failed. Hitler, despite controlling the majority of the continent at one point and being poised to take control, he failed to unite Europe. Europe has never and will never be united into one empire. The Bible's prediction is and has always come to pass and will never fail. They can try with common currency or whatever. It will fail. This prophecy of Daniel has revealed 2,500 years of earth's history with striking pinpoint accuracy. But friends, there is still one part of the prophecy that is yet to be fulfilled. But we can be certain, we can have no doubts that it will come to pass just as surely as the rest of his prophecy. Speaking of the days of modern Europe in which we live in today, Daniel exclaims and he says in Daniel 2 verse 44, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. People, but it shall crush and destroy all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Daniel clearly states the final events of this groundbreaking prophecy. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Friend, you can be part of this new kingdom and it will not be established by even any human hands. You can live forever in paradise with God, the God of universe. I would do all I can to be there with my Savior forever. What about you? Is there something impossible expected from us to be there? The Bible says in Matthew 7 verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Are you willing to do the will of our Father? That is the only condition. On this channel we will support you as you prepare for that kingdom. And we will show you how you can be part of it. If you have enjoyed this video or if it has been helpful to you, I encourage you to click like and subscribe to this channel. If you would like to learn more about the Bible's teachings and know how they apply to your life, I encourage you to continue looking at these studies. Let's pray and ask God's presence. Thank you, God, for the sure word of prophecy, which after this session gives even more confidence in your word. Thank you for your wonderful love in telling us not only where this, this world has been, but where it is going to, and so that we may be part of your kingdom. Keep us safe until then. We pray this in the lovely name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, stay safe. Until next time, may God bless you.